Well, it's been a while, so here I am back again. So let's get started here. A little classic. Um, I guess I can turn this down. Here we go. All right, move this over here. We can work with it. Okay. Let's go to classic and add a load of cartridge. Uh, there's one right on the desktop here, which is the new RxB 2020. I finally got the that working. Okay, so I think maybe we need to make this a little smaller. Okay, should be able to see that. Uh, anyways, let's start off with here by looking at this. This is a thing called Manager. And RxB has a new manager for RAM and VDP. And this is the demo. And I already ran this right here and uh, made a user file. So if you want to look at the user file, you can go to the directory here. It's in disk one. And anyways, uh, there's the manager right here. View the file. As you can see, it's, I have to put a period after each line here. And the reason why I do that is because, um, oh, wait a minute, memory. It has to put a period at the end of it. That period is actually the, the carriage return because I use a TI writer version of uh, user. It requires that because user, what user does is it uses a DV85 and it reads it as if you typed it in. But it doesn't know that they're supposed to be the end of the line. I could put spaces in there, but that would be a problem for other programs because you have spaces inside a, you know, a string. So instead, I just used a carriage return, which is character 13. That's what that dot is right there. So anyways, now that we've got that out of the way, we have a little program here called Fix. Now what Fix does is it just does on error first, and it opens two files. It opens the manager file and the memory file and output as an output. And what it does is it loads it and it just looks to see what the line is and then adds a character return at the end of it. Even if the line is four lines, 80 you know, characters long, it could be another line. In other words, it could be like four lines long. It would still just keep adding characters until it gets to the end when it finds that there's nothing there. Then what it does is when it gets to the end, it says, okay, I'll put a carriage return there. So that's what that is. Just a little routine that I wrote. Now I got those out of the way. Let's do this. Call user one and it's called memory let's run it okay so first off we need to look at the size routine now the size routine does this it gives you your stack size your memory your in XP programs now I change these what you normally would see in normal XB it says something different I change it to stack bytes free it just made more sense I change just the program by its fee. Because the way they reported it previously in there, it's basic. If you look at it right now, it's it looks silly. It, anyway, this is a better way of doing it. Page number location. This is for your SAMS memory. Page two, three, four, all these pages right here on what location they take up in memory for the SAMS. Then you have your memory used in free. Now, right now with the VDP space, the VDP free address, that's the first free address of VDP that is open. This right here is your stack location. This right here is the first free memory address in the top of RAM in the 32K. Uh, the debugger resides above this, TI debugger. And that's the reason why they picked this address for extended basic. This is normal. Uh, AO40 is your last address in the upper 24K. You'll have 64 bytes below this for hooks. Anyways, then we have our, our uh, RAM for the uh, lower 8K, which is your assembly right here. That's your RAM down here. Okay, press enter. Here we go. This is your, uh, you, you see your free address spaces and all that stuff. This is what's describing. I'm going to do a call in it. So it ran the program, call in it, it did a size, did a call key, and ask for it. And then here's the size we're looking at right here. It's still waiting for a key to go to now. So you can run programs from call user. It'll run extend basic program after extend basic program and call user. But this is about the memory manager, so we'll just take a look at that. 
As you can see, it did a call in it. So now the simulating space, which was a full 8K, is now 6924. So and it also reports where the memory is free, the first free address and the last free address. If we load a program, it'll start showing you other things. Anyways, now we've done that. You can see the little AK change. Yeah, okay, right. Now this is the, v the new VDP stack manager. Changing the VDP stack triggers reset VDP in program space, so it does a new after each challenge you use called VDP stack. So you can't run anything after this because it'll do a new, which is why user exists so you can do this because you can't do it from extended basic program without it doing a new after it does it. It has to reset the stack for the location and so it does a new. So your normal stack location is 0958 stack in hex. It's going to do a call to that and it's going to show you the size and of course the stack has not changed. That's the normal setting. Okay, let's use, let's use a different space. Let's change the VDB stack to 1000 VDB stack location. It did it. There you go. Now your VDB stack is at 1000 right here. Over here, this is what's going on in the program. You see these lines. New VDB stack manager, uh, stack F776, down here somewhere. Right here. There it is, right there. So if we move it up here, you'll see where we're at. There it is. Anyways, so it's going to change it. To, this is the same as a missing link. 1820 is where he moves the VDP stack. So this will do that for you without having to roll a program to make it work. RxB will do it automatically. You can just do that. There your stack is changed. All right, so we've done that. Let's put the stack back where it was. We did that. Let's go to the next really cool thing, the memory manager. And this is for RAM, the upper 24K. All right, so we're going to call PRAM, that's the name of the program. The other one's called call VDP stack. This one's called call PRAM, which is a program RAM. And anyway, so we uh, have the add RAM address. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the memory address at the normal, which is FFE7, normal. That's a minus 25 in decimal. And the normal is A040, which is 24516 minus decimal. So that's normal. So let's just set that. And it shows you that nothing's changed. Let's change that. How about a full 24K? We're going to move it to FFFF, which is the, where the debugger normally resides. Now, we don't have the debugger loaded right now, so it shouldn't be a problem. There are programs that will interfere with this. That's true. So you have to be careful with the RAM manager. And we're going to change the RAM address in the end from A040 to the full 24K. You actually have a full 24K of RAM finally, just by doing this PRAM minus 1, minus 24, 576. So let's do that. Go to size. And there you go, bud. 24576 program bytes free. First time you ever saw that much, huh? And it even shows you the addresses where it takes place at FFF, F and A000. Okay, let's do the next test, just for the screwing around. Let's change it to F0 by changing the top RAM address uh, to F000, and let's move the uh, end address to B0. So that's going to be a total of this for 16K RAM. Now you have a 16K upper 24K B, uh, XB RAM. Cool. There it is right there. There's the size, and there's the locations. Let's go to try next try. Let's put it back at normal for that, and let's move the... Uh, down to 8K with 8 bytes of RAM, because you have right here E7 up to uh, FFF. So what we have to do is, well, anyways, we're going to have 8K of RAM minus 8 bytes. There it is. 8K of RAM minus 8 bytes. Okay, let's go to the next one. New RAM manager. There you go. That's for 4K. Next one we're going to do is we're going to do um, Debug area. We're going to give you a total of 25 bytes of RAM. There it goes. 25 bytes of RAM. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's try 1,000, 1K. Here we go. 1K of RAM. There you go. 
Okay, uh, let's try this. Let's go back to FFF and FF0 for 256 bytes. My girlfriend's home. There you go. Talking to I'm talking to the screen because I'm making a video. <laughs> All right, anyways, guys, that was the uh, video. I just wanted to show you what I've been doing, and that's uh, I finally got it working. I had to re I had to redo the uh, assembly. I had to change assembly for the ROMs because it was resetting the RAM and other pointers. So you got new ROMs now, finally. So we'll see you guys later. Take care.